Okay, welcome to MeFactory's Transparent Factory or Open Factory. I think this is already streaming number six. Um, and I'm going to explain uh, what we are going to work on today in a minute. But before that, I just want to explain again how this whole thing works. So this is the Open Factory by MeFactory. Basically, you can look through the window inside of our workshop. And I'm going to work here on a regular project. We have so real-time advancement of this project. And while I do this, I will take pictures and these pictures will end up on Flickr. And if you happen to watch this uh, on YouTube now, you can find the link to this Flickr album in the video description. And there you can go and find all images with hashtag number six. And if you see something there where you're really interested in uh, how this came to be, how this was produced, then you can go back to the video and try to figure out when this uh, was done. So basically you can search within the video using the images I'm going to shoot here while I'm work while I work. Okay, uh, what are we going to work on today? We are continue to uh, progress the open shelf notes project. You can see here behind me uh, the little thing we used to make the images for the project and we're going to do several things today. First of all, uh, we are trying to record a video where we briefly explain uh, why and how the open shelf notes is an open circular design. So in the video we will produce a video, so we're pretty meta again, and this video will then later be cut it out and made available separately to have this um, tackled. Hopefully uh, I can remember most things why this is an open circular design. After that we are going to produce uh, stoppers. So uh, we will produce our own stoppers, uh, a set colors from uh, acrylic. At least that's what we're going to try to do. Uh, I have some uh, laser cutted thicker acrylic parts and we're going to tr try to uh, put a little hole and then an internal thread into and then see if this works as a uh, stopper. Then we'll go through the workshop and try to find all kinds of other solutions to make stoppers for the open shelf notes in order to document them later. Maybe we'll also shoot a little video about them uh, today in the stream. So um, another thing that uh, builds on the documentation of the open shelf notes and adds also a little bit uh, actually uh, actual hardware prototyping. And then if there's still time we're going to uh, open up FreeCut and design uh, another 3D printable open shelf node where you can put an already existing nut inside to then have a, a bolt fixing it to the uh, horizontal bar of the uh, of the shelf. So another way to make a stopper just using a regular nut and bolt as part of a 3D printed or otherwise molded uh, shelf node. Okay, that's it. Um, let's start. And I'm going to start with setting up uh, the set to shoot a video about how the open shelf nodes are in open circular design. For this, the first thing I have to do is switch on this image and switch this one on and see what's a good angle to explain this. Mm, probably this. What do you think? Yeah. So this is already prepared. The other things I will prepare in the process. Maybe you can see, I don't think it's covered in any of the images, that so this is it's a acrylic with a with a mirror on top which makes a really nice effect in the design. So, um, let me think. Maybe another hello? Yeah. So hello, this is a very short video where I explain why the open shelf nodes are an open circular design and how they achieve this. Um, and I brought with me here a little ex collection of example notes in this little structure we also used for uh, the documentation of the open shelf node projects. And uh, you can also see the image about uh, the nine 
strategies connected to open circular design and I will just briefly uh, go through all of these nine methodologies and explain a little bit how the open shelf nodes achieve uh, to meet the goals of these uh, um, stra design strategies if they do. So let's have a look at the image uh, and the first thing is uh, on the next uh, on the left to the O of open there is open licensed and of course the open shelf nodes are openly licensed you can find the uh, the, uh, the documentation next to the license on the Mifactory website and there you will see that all the documentation is of course shared under a Creative Commons attribution license and that there's also uh, the Mifactory public promise where we guarantee you that even if it would be possible to claim design rights or patents for this kind of design uh, that we would never ever do this. So uh, this is an open design, you can use it in any way you see fit without having to ask us for permission or whatever. But keep in mind that this uh, is open hardware but not the Mifactory brand is, um, is registered so you can make these things, sell these things, but don't call them Mifactory notes uh, because this the, the brand Mifactory isn't open. But the design is super open and uh, we will probably, definitely, all of the things that we will continue to develop for this project will also be under an open license. So we will always have the same license there. So what's the next? What's right under the uh, open license tag? It says simple. I think it's pretty clear that this is a very simple design. It, it really doesn't take anything to understand how this uh, was made. And because it's documented and some parts are already very well documented, for example these uh, plastic bricks uh, shelf notes, it's also very easy to learn um, to learn how, how to make these things. I mean, okay, no one really knows and needs to learn how uh, Lego bricks uh, work, but maybe uh, if you want to use a 3D printer for the first time, you can just download the files and uh, plug it into your printer and then print these things. Or you can also learn how uh, you can make 3D objects from 2D parts that then even are capable to uh, give strength to a larger structure. So I think this is a design that uh, really invites you to learn more about materials and how a structure can be, become stable and also a project that educates you about different uh, methods of production as the Open Shelf Notes really tries to show a lot of different ways to make the very same technical idea work in your daily life. So, what comes right uh, under us, simple, on the right, it's modular, I think, yes, of course, we don't really have to discuss how this is a modular design. You can take out all the, the rods. Oh, there's another workshop going on uh, over us. You can take uh, out all the rods and you can uh, reuse the rods in a different um, project or in this very same project. You can just uh, assemble it differently. You can reuse the... Um, the, uh, the notes as well for something else, as a candle holder or to support other structures. And some of these things are even modular in itself. For example, obviously the ones with the Lego bricks, um, uh, you can dismantle them and take these modular bricks to build something else. I think we have other projects uh, on the web and also in, on the factory website that show you how you can use the Lego bricks for something else than just uh, playing with them. So modular, Parts can be taken uh, apart and used differently and uh, reassembled in a different way. Uh, also the nuts and bolts we use here. Yeah. What's next? Um, upcycling friendly. Yeah, this is really what makes this design so, so interesting, I think, is that uh, you can, first of all, it gives you an opportunity to give all kinds of rods a new and second life. For example, in Berlin on the streets, you very often see uh, these, uh, oh, I like the English word right now, uh, where you put your clothes to dry, these, these clothes dryers. And there is as garbage on the street and they are made out of perfectly fine rods. You can just uh, cut them, measure the rods, and then uh, use these rods um, in an open shelf node shelf. When you manufacture the, the right uh, uh, shelf nodes for them. It's super easy, for example, to make this uh, with the wooden version. You just measure the diameter of the rod. Um. Mm. 
using this tool, I don't know the English word, uh, in German it's um, Messschieber. And let's say you find in the trash or somewhere in your home, you find a, a, a rod and then you measure it and then you see, okay, this is uh, 20 millimeters and then you find a 20 millimeter drill and make a wood version that will uh, enable you to to reuse this rod. And of course, uh, you can, uh, if you make wooden uh, shelf notes, you can reuse all kinds of uh, scrap wood or leftover wood to make these uh, knots because you don't really need a long bar, for example, to make these knots. So this really enables um, uh, the reuse uh, of uh, old rods and also old woods. And you might even say that uh, this might be an upcycling of Lego bricks, but I'm not sure if we should say this. Um, yes, um, and the coolest thing is really when you 3D print them, uh, as written in the documentation, uh, for example, you measure uh, all of the 3D printable nodes that are uploaded uh, up till now, till May uh, 2021, 20, uh, um, are made for 16 millimeter rods because they are pretty standard. But you can just scale them in your slicer. For example, if you have 12 millimeter rods, you just print them at 75% size, and then you have uh, nods that work for your 12 millimeter rods. And you can also envision, and we are going to build this at some point, that uh, one shelf node has different. Uh, whole sizes in the very same node. So you can maybe have at the, at the horizontal bar, you can have a very thick rod and at the other um, uh, layers you can have uh, uh, thinner uh, rods, for example. So this is a design that invites you to find old material and then put this into this modular shelf. So what's next? Uh, recyclable? Of course, recyclable depends on the material you choose to make this design. Um, as this is a design that uh, enables different materials to be used, it of course enables uh, a lot of um, uh, recyclable materials to be used. Um, not all of these materials here are recyclable, but for example uh, the silicone node, which is super nice. Um, silicone is a highly uh, recyclable material and we are going to produce uh, silicone um, molds in the future for ourselves and, and for, for the larger project uh, that will already include recycled uh, silicone. So you can re uh, reuse silicone yourself in your home workshop, just cut down old silicone. For example, we have this, uh, this silicone from uh, uh, which you use in your bath, for example, and this was uh, dried out in the pistol, but we took it out. You can cut it uh, into smaller pieces and then add it into fresh silicone and put it in the inside of, an, uh, of a silicone shelf node. Yeah, and you can envision that you, for example, make this from, from recyclable plastic and so on. So not all the materials I have here are super duper recyclable, but it's easy to see that you can use recyclable materials. So what's the next? Um, Standards, yeah, as I said, uh, we are plugging into existing standards, for example, with the um, uh, Lego brick version or the plastic brick version. Um, and uh, the cool thing is that we have all the nodes where you can download the documentation up till now made in a 16 for 16 millimeter rods and 16 millimeter rods are a super available standard at least where my factory is located here in Germany and I assume probably all over Europe too. So magically most rods you can buy are a 16 millimeter uh, diameter or you can buy 16 millimeter diameter rods almost everywhere and this is also very beautiful because it works perfectly with uh, these plastic bricks, these standardized plastic bricks, because the distance between two studs is two, uh, 8 millimeters, so makes two studs 16 millimeters, and that's why this fits so tightly and so perfectly. So, um, yeah, and the cool thing about uh, the 16 millimeter diameter is that in most starter drill kits, here in uh, Germany at least, a 16 millimeter uh, bit or drill is included. Um, yeah, it's built on standard and invites you to incorporate more standards. Um, what else? Educative? Yeah, I think most of the things about the educative part, didn't I talk already about educative? I talked about simple. Um, 
Yeah, most of the thing about the educative part uh, was already covered when I talked about simple because, as I said, the documentation of this project is online and also if you look at a shelf like this, maybe even a shelf that in includes several different kinds of shelf notes, which is a fun thing to do with an open shelf note shelf, that you jo don't just have one type of shelf, maybe you have two or three types, that this really uh, encourages you to think about this and that, that this is a technical solution that isn't uh, bound to one specific material or to one specific way to set it up. So it's a design that invites you to creatively think about it, adapt it in your mind, in your head, in two, two different situations. It's also very colorful, so uh, it, it makes it easier to um, understand and, 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 and see differences in the design and reassemble it maybe uh, in your mind or maybe, maybe even with your hand. And if you have this at home, it looks like a toy maybe and uh, invites also to reassemble it and play with it, adapt it to other situations and so on. I think educative, it's, it's pretty fair to say this is uh, educative design. Then uh, let's, let's move to the center of the uh, image and there it says pre-use. For those of you who don't know this uh, term, pre-use is a term uh, that I personally learned from Jan Kerbis from Refunk and um, it describes that you use materials maybe in a different way as usually intended or in the way they were intended but you leave them intact as if they're still in the hardware store. For example, you don't drill or cut or paint them. And this is a this, this, the open shelf note design invites you to pre-use a lot. For example, all these um, rods here used, they don't need any uh, drilling or painting and so on. You can just put them in and then take them out and use them for something entirely else. You can easily envision that if you set up a temporary infrastructure using open shelf notes, then you can um, borrow these rods maybe from a hardware store you set up your shelf and then you bring them back because you didn't do any harm to these rods so you have a perfectly modular reusable parts uh, here and the same thing is true also for the boards we will cover boards for this um, solution in a later video and, and, uh, and the documentation at a later point and there are also several ways how you can put just um, boards on top of this structure without having to drill the boards or cut it or glue it or whatever. So it's, uh, it enables you to leave the materials intact for different uses later on. You don't have to change the materials to make them parts that work for this design. Yeah, And the, uh, the last uh, method or strategy that uh, is connected to open circular design is this uh, support for the biosphere and uh, most designs um, don't check this box yeah i mean you can envision that you use this this construction to set something up for birds maybe a bird's nest or an ant farm or whatever but it's not necessarily um, part of the design i mean we will see later on we might create a, a notes that's actually a nice idea from some uh, organic material that then maybe gives home to uh, to some little flowers on top. That would actually be nice. You can have a little flower <laughs> in here maybe. There is space. Um, yeah, you can envision to to change or further adapt the uh, open shelf nodes to a point where it also um, supports the biosphere. Yeah, I think this was a, a Plenty of information and explanation why and how the open shelf nodes are an open circular design and um, maybe at a later point we will create an updated version of this video when there's also more things to say about the boards and the stoppers which is uh, what we are going to work on today a little bit further more maybe okay Yo. I think we covered that and now I'm going to put this into the um, shelf and we're going to uh, start collecting stoppers, experimenting with stoppers uh, for this structure um, Yeah, and drilling a little bit into acrylic and let's see if we can make our own set colors which would be super cool. Ooh. 
So, I don't think we need this image any longer. Maybe we can put... <laughs> okay, let, give me some time to assemble the... Uh, the situation Oh, I didn't know. I did document. Ah, this is when you make a project over several months. I own a perfect uh, shelf node with for a drilled acrylic. This looks awesome when it's assembled. I need to document this. Oh yeah, this is for Okay, what's the plan here?
Test, test, test. And I think I need three three millimeter. Do I own three millimeter? Okay. Don't do this at home. Okay, in this video we are trying to show you, we experimented uh, with it ourselves, how to make your very own set colors from uh, acrylic. And uh, this is uh, uh, how this works. So we have this 8mm acrylic material. Or is it even, wait. Oh, it's even uh, 10 millimeters. So it's a 10 millimeter acrylic material. And the laser cut cutter we have access to is able to cut this material. So it's not very nice and sharp uh, edges. 
and you have even some burnings here so it's not it's not really a success but I I think when you take go for 8 mm with the laser cutter we can use a, we will be able to get some clean shapes but also this uh, might be good enough and the idea is now to use a regular drill and drill a hole in this and then put uh, using these thread cutters uh, internal threads in there and then put in uh, bolts and then you have your very own um, set colors you can use for example for uh, to fix your open shelf nodes uh, onto a, an horizontal bar but also for uh, other things. So the, we cut it here uh, an internal hole of 60 millimeters because 60 millimeter is standard for uh, rods uh, that is widely spread in Germany and probably also all over Europe. Uh, so it would be easy to find rods that fit in there. Uh, and now we are going to drill. As, in, as you can see, uh, we cut it different diameters. Uh, because we didn't know how much material we need. Probably this one, the thinnest one, uh, will be enough to make a, a set color. And we're going to uh, create two experiments. I have here for this uh, 10 millimeter material. Oh yeah, oh, cool. And this one is eight millimeter. Oh, sorry, it's so long ago that I laser cut these. And as you can see here with the eight millimeter, um, uh, part is that the, sh the edges are much cleaner so this is actually uh, perfectly usable and aesthetically pleasing if we can make it work so okay what we're going to do then this is 10 millimeter so I think we're going to try to make go within the 10 millimeter ring uh, with a three with a three millimeter drill to then uh, cut a thread for an M4 bolt and for the thinner material we are, prob we are definitely trying to go with a thinner uh, hole in thread and I have here uh, M3 uh, bolts and that's what we are going to do there. Let's see if this works. I really am not an expert in cutting internal threads. I did it two times but also uh, one time in the critic and it worked. I know that it works. The question is, can you make it work if you are not uh, a very trained uh, craftsman like I am? So let's start with the bigger one. Yeah, and this is a real-time video, so maybe you can uh, use on YouTube the functionality to have the video played on a double speed. Okay. And this is not a proper way to do this. I just do this that I don't have to reassemble the camera for this shot. Okay. Let's check. Usually I would use a, a a stand drill to, for this, but um, yeah, for this recording, we try and try it like this. So, Question is, mm, no, I mean a little bit wider. Ha, <laughs> ha, 
<laughs> I, can, I think you can see at the cardboard how often uh, threads were cut here in the workshop. Two or three times. Thread cutter. Yeah, I own one. The question is, will this work? But we start with the large one anyway. So. Here comes the tricky part. You have to go back sometimes to break the material, die Späne brechen, wie man auf Deutsch sagt. Push through. Yeah, this is really severe burnings here. And now let's see. Yes, goes in really smoothly. Mm -hmm. 
slips and stays. Yay! <laughs> there you go, this is your very own set color and it's really strong. Yeah, it's strong. Cool. Let's do the same thing for the 8mm um, material. I think we should try to make also a set color uh, from 8mm material using an M4 bolt. Why? Maybe because the bolt is stronger or maybe we are just curious if this is possible. Yeah, let's do this. And after that we are going for the 3mm uh, bolt for the M3 bolt. This is something I don't know. I should Google. You have to clean up the thread cutter. And I assume this is the tool to do this, but I don't know. Don't know how. Okay, although this is the open factory, usually in an open factory I would Google this right now, but it's also supposed to be a little bit, a little bit entertaining, so... Googling is probably not the right thing to do now. Drilling is... Maybe let's take a picture. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. The camera is full. 
Sorry. Dun, dun, dun. This one is harder to meet. It's not too hard, actually. I mean, if I have a, an M4 bolt in there and I have 8 millimeter material, this means I have only 2 millimeters of material on each side to support everything. This is not much. But maybe the force isn't really on that material on the side. It's also, I think the, the, the forces in these set colors are distributed quite equally to all areas or, or many areas of the ring. But this is all speculation. I need to ask an engineer. Mm, but maybe now it becomes Almost there. Okay, yes, I'm through. Okay. Am I though? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. 
Ne? Does it work? I mean, this is a pretty satisfying um, project or work, so I assume if you, I mean, you would have to make for each shelf node in your shelf one. If you have a small shelf, I think making eight. Oh, oh, oh. this second time But I'm not sure how DIY it still is when you're talking about cutting threads. serious works okay now the three millimeter one let me look at this this will work for shelves Ah. 
how much damage is there on the, on the rod. Let's see. Yeah, a little bit, but you know, not too serious. Okay. Now let's see if all of this also works with a thinner bolt and a thinner thread. This is a two millimeter drill. Probably when you have a thinner thread, it's more likely that you will destroy it while cutting it, and that it will get destroyed when you apply a lot of pressure. So maybe you have less of a weak point left and right to your hole, but maybe the weak point is in the hole. So probably the M4 solution. It's the best one, not only because of this is a, an even more widely available standard to replace, for example. In the videos they never apply pressure, but I don't... No, this will not work without pressure. Yeah, this doesn't go too well.
No, this is not going well. It's just harder. Ja, hallo, hier ist Lars. Hi. Mhm. Kann ich dich zurückrufen in einer Stunde ungefähr, anderthalb? Alles klar, dann rufe ich 18 Uhr zurück. And we oh this is definitely not enjoyable. The thinner threads. Huh? No. Okay, that simply does not work when you have the skill level I have. <laughs> okay. <laughs> not sure. Yeah, then M4 is the way to go. And no, no way. Okay, that's something we learned. But the cool thing, when you made a not working attempt with a smaller hole, you can still shoot a larger one through. make a big one too, but why should you make a big one? Why shouldn't you?
Ja, trau dich. Faster. Okay. Hmm. Okay, that was necessary. Number one and Oh, that goes quick. Yeah, you can see with a little bit of exercise, a little bit of training, and this is really fast. Seen her come and go. Boom, boom, boom.
Just for the picture. Have you seen her come and go? Oh yeah, look at that. <clears throat> Ooh. Oh, that is nice. Oh no, yeah, Jesus, oh shit. May the force be with me. Please don't break. Like ninety scratching. Come in colors in the air.
Stage, oh, I know that. We know that. That's from the factory. Okay, let's kick it. Okay. I mean, uh, oh, no, that's not too tight. Ouch. No, what is I mean, the larger you make these, the longer the hebel, the lever becomes, the more strength or force goes onto the move, onto the ring. So maybe the small version, I mean the small versions are perfectly fine. I like that. Clean up. Stay tuned, we are going to um, collect all kinds of stoppers here and try to discuss them. Let's see how many we can find in our workshop here to discuss and maybe take pictures of.
Ooh, only half an hour left. We can do something else instead, maybe. Yes. Okay. Just clean up, wait. If you are into open design and make simple designs like we do, then almost 50% of the time is for documentation and the other 50 is for the actual prototyping. And from the actual prototyping, at least 10% are for cleaning up. Or putting everything back onto shelves. We are, uh, yeah, I'm going to explain in a minute what we are going to do. I just reassemble a little bit the window here. I'm using uh, OBS, the open source streaming software, which is really nice. And super intuitive. 
Non Ok. Non Non. Okay in, the remind okay, in the remaining time, we are going to make a different experiment than we usually thought. Okay, in the remaining time, we're going to make another experiment. This morning, when I brought our kit to the Kita, uh, on the way back, there was a construction site, and they were putting stuff on, uh, onto an old building to um, condemn the heat. So they isolated it, and I... Uh, got this piece of material as a present from one of the construction workers because I thought, hey, maybe this could make a really cool temporary uh, shelf node. I never worked with this material before. It's still poor, you know, it's just this little walls here, probably glued together. And I don't know really how to work with it. Can I cut it? Uh, yeah, and I just will make my very, very first encounter with this material to see if we can turn this into an interesting uh, open shelf node. Um, maybe a large one, maybe for some plastic rods. Let's see. First experiment is, can we cut this? So it's all real time. You are warned. Um, Usually I would set up the workbench a bit different, but you know, for this... How would you cut this? Probably with heat. I would try with the saw. Plastic waste. Look at this. You would, if you would want to do this sustainably, you would definitely would to take care of this little stuff here. Really make sure that it doesn't get into the groundwater. But to a facility where it's burned.
Oh, that is like cutters. Ooh, even better. Then you have a good cutter. Okay, danger zone. Okay, this cutter and I were never friends. Knife, a sharp knife. Yeah, I remember. Okay, how about drilling? So for 16 mm rods, we will try to drill a 12 mm hole and then squeeze it in and also experiment with a 16 mm drill. Question is, is it possible to drill this? What happens? <laughs> Okay, this is the sixteen millimeters. Yes, it works. It's tight, but would not be tight enough to not slip down. Go to the side. Yes. Hey, my drill. millimeters and a 60 millimeter rod. Wow, that works really well. Jesus, look at this. Can you even apply pressure? See this? Oh. 
That's very nice for temporary exhibitions. Super cool. Okay, uh, what what I, have I done here? I found this material, I cut it with a knife or a saw and then for 60 millimeter rods I drilled a 12 millimeter hole and now I'm going to experiment with a 10 millimeter hole but it will work equally well, sure. Let's go for it, make a real shelf move. Come on. Let's make an A type, type A. Okay, I drilled from from the good side, but I never tried to drill from this side. Let's see. That's just really awesome because you know there's this um. There's so much leftover material from this. Of course, you have to use a, a stand drill for this to make it accurately. this quick test. Okay. Okay. Come on, let's take a picture.
Okay, no, 10 millimeter is not to recommend. Then you use too much force when you put this together. We're going to test this in a minute with 12. Okay, don't use 10. Don't use 10 unless you have a really large node. But this broke here, can you see? This broke. But I try to fit this through. But if you have more material on the side, then 10 also works. Then it's really tight. <laughs> Sorry. Look at that. And how much pressure? Easily. For lightweight objects like documents. Oh, this is just such a nice project. Take one clean shot of this and then that's it. I mean, I will just take one clean shot and then the factory is over anyway. Okay, um, thank you. That's it for today. Um, yeah, as you have seen, we uh, uh, made three things. We explained why the open shelf nodes are an open circular design, why and how. Then we made some um, set colors from laser cut acrylics for uh, the support of open shelf nodes, which worked very well and um, will be documented a little bit more and then put onto the uh, website of Mi Factory as part of the documentation of the open shelf node. And then we made a super exciting experiment from this material that, that is used to. Um, make buildings lose less cold. I don't know the English word for demon. Um, insulate? Maybe insulate. And saw so that it's super easy to cut this material and drill it and turn it into shelf nodes that are stable enough to build uh, temporary uh, shelves for, um, for exhibitions and so on. Super fun, super quick, super beautiful, super nice. Um, yeah, so we added something to the system. Thanks, uh, plug in next time, probably next uh, Wednesday will be the next stream, uh, the factory is open factory streaming number 7. Support us if you like, uh, yeah, and see you soon, bye bye.